Welcome to Off Watch, where we're going to do something a little bit different for this episode. If you've been following us since the beginning of this interview series, you'll know that we started this because COVID-19 meant that we weren't going to go sailing anytime soon. And the stars of our race were all pretty much locked down at home. Well, what better opportunity would we get to invite them to a one-on-one -on -one sit down interview and a conversation about some of the things that make them tick? Well, in our first series, we've had 34 interviews. And during that time, we've learned about the Amoka 60s and what's to come in the future, but also some of those stories that we might have missed from the races past. Certainly some of those moments that we didn't get a chance to dissect as they were happening. We've spoken to people that were scared in the Southern Ocean, thrilled at winning, and of course, just in there for the challenge and what the race has meant to them. So today we thought we'd take a look at some of the highlights from those stories and pick out some key moments. A chance for some of us to catch up on what we might have missed or, if you've been watching since the beginning, to relive some of those incredible stories. We hope you enjoy it. Can you think that far back as to when it was that you first, you know, fell in love with the sport? Was it just getting on a boat and thinking, well, this is great, or, or did it take a little bit of convincing? I hated sailing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I say hate, I, I would go out in a tiny little river and I would tell the instructors that I was seasick to get out of it, you know, and how can, you can't be seasick, the river's about that wide, you know? So um, my father conned me into, you know, going back for one more summer and I met a group of friends and before you know it, um, it wasn't so bad because I had some friends, you know, you, you clamp on to the next goal and you just, you know, grip your teeth around it and you don't let go until until you got it. And so that's that's kind of the way that worked. When I was 22 and walking over the dock at the time in Vigo, I remember that I was really looking up against uh, Torben Grill and also against, of course, guys like Paul Kayard. But, you know, guys like Paul Kayard, they don't see me standing, you know. <laughs> and uh, I remember uh, Torben Grill coming to the dock and he stopped and he said, Hey, see me on, I'm Torben. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy knows my name. You know, this is, this is pretty incredible, you know? That for me was uh, a very big welcome into this race. Yeah, 12 years later, I guess, he was there on the dock again, but then as a father <laughs> and telling me, you're gonna better take care of my daughter. <laughs> and that's definitely never crossed my mind when I was 22 and I meet him for the first time. And that was actually very funny uh, for, for me, how life can go and how you sort of grow into the sport as well. So many different characters, so many different like mindsets, so many different um, like nationalities. And that's a massive difference. Like you're, it's not about... You're, you're the language on board. Yeah. It's not just about the communication, it's just, a, it's also about how different we are. Like, take an Italian, take a Swedish, and take an Australian and a British. It's not just about the language that they speak, but it's about how we deal with problems, how we deal with stuff, the mindset, it's a bit the culture side. I think D did an incredible job to put together a group of people so different and at the same time so together on working on the same things and that's a really like chapeau to Dee because it's not an easy thing to do she didn't go through the easy way she did through a full inclusive way try to give opportunity to more people give opportunity to more country and for me that was like amazing amazing for the ocean race would that come across your radar again and if it did is skipper the only role that you would take on or could you see yourself fitting into a crew i genuinely love the race i love everything about it and what it does and i love that all absorbing 10 months of your life that you give it everything and you walk away completely void of any energy or emotion at the end of it um, and I would love to be part of a crew. What's almost really bad is I'm almost associated with, oh, well, you'll do your own project or you'll obviously lead a team. And actually, I feel I've missed out. All those girls that got to sail on the other boats sailed with super experienced people and learned from some of the best sailors that are out there that have got huge amounts of experience. And how lovely would it be to go around the world with no responsibility but make a boat go fast? But, you know, I don't have an ego that, 
has to see me at the top of the tree at all. You know, I, I'm, I'm happy to mock bilges the same as everybody else. You know, even on my crew, I wouldn't ever ask them to do anything I wasn't prepared to do myself. And that goes for any boat that I'm put on. So, yeah, don't write me off, anybody. <laughs> Sci-fi was about, Simon Fisher was about 21 years old or something, and he came along for a trial, and we put him on the end of a jib sheet on America's Cup boat, the old style America's Cup boat. It's terrifying. I never went near it. Uh, and we did a trial, and we said, look, we're going to pick five or six people to keep with us, and we'll take them to New Zealand. And Sci-fi didn't make the trials. And Sci-fi wrote to me, and he said, you know, dear Ian, uh, you know, I came to the trials, really disappointed to me. I just want, I'll do anything to be involved. I, I don't want to be paid. I don't want expenses. I don't care if I sweep the yard. I just want to get involved. He seemed like a really good lad. He only just missed out. Maybe we can look at him. And so I said, okay, well, look, we'll take you. Come and do a month with us, and we're not going to pay you. And we'll see how it works out. Well, Sci-Fi came, and he worked so hard um, that, he ended up not only staying with the team, I felt so bad not paying him, I started paying him after about a month. He ended up actually crewing on a race in the America's Cup. You know, Sci-Fi is now one of the most famous Volvo Ocean race navigators. You know, he's won the race and it was all because of his attitude. For somebody who says, oh, I, I, I want to do the 65s, you know, you were a young guy, you sort of got your foot in the door, kicked it open, you know, got yourself there. Is there any sort of little bits of advice to give somebody who wants to try and chase down a role in the next race? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I really hope that the 65s do present some new opportunities for guys because it has you know, the race has always been really difficult to get in, get into, and you know it is a bit of a club. You know, you see the same guys in, in different shirts every every three or four years' time, and we all kind of move around and uh, and and it is it's not for nothing. You know, experience is obviously vitally important, but. Um, but uh, yeah, it is nice to see new people getting into the race and opportunities into the race. And I think the one thing the race has always lacked is a sort of a pathway into it. I mean, I guess I'm sort of testament to the fact that that you you, you can get there through you know big boat sailing and and you know trying to meet the right people and, and putting yourself forward and 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 actually you know there's, there's there's plenty of good guys out there who follow that pathway. So it's it's really about yeah, getting out there, getting out racing, and and get on the big boats, take your opportunities. I mean, I think one always always try and be the like least experienced guy on the boat. That was always sort of kind of one of my mantras. Unfortunately, <laughs> the right part age of forty two now. That's pretty difficult. <laughs> What's the one thing? Is there one thing above all else that if you want to be a good skipper, good leader? This is it. I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I, I'm the best uh, person to, to give advice to anyone. In my opinion, it's let the people do what they know doing better than you. You know, it's, it's impossible. One person can be better than anyone else, than everyone else in everything. We always say when sometimes we do some talks or whatever, Mafre or some companies, and, and these days it's almost some fashion to say teamwork and all this, you know, they to say these words but in sailing ocean sailing this is a team effort it's nothing you can do on your own and and you have to trust the people you have around you and if you don't trust them you better change them when you look back is there something that you can stick a pin in to show how much you as a sailor have, have developed how far you've come a big moment for me was this last race and and it was uh it was my fifth time round Cape Horn. I just remember, you know, finally having a bit of a moment and just going, wow, you know, like the, the things that have gone on to have been able to sail around such an iconic place. You know, I used to, used to see this stuff as a kid in the, in the books about the early explorers and everything. To think, end up doing five times around? Never, never even thought about it, not once. Now, when I'm doing, you know, the Volvo and the Ocean Race, it's like take a moment and and appreciate what you have and what you're doing. It's because it's it's not it's not normal and it's privileged. First of all, I love the race. Uh, I think it's the best sailing what you can have. It's it's no doubt about that. It's also the the worst moments in life you can have. But I think that's the fantastic thing that you can just forget about them. There's a lot of people who come back, eh? and it's and they probably have the same reason than me. They they just love it. It's 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 a fan, it's it's a fantastic way of making your living. I, I agree. But 
just the whole, all the aspects, the nature and the team, uh, being out there in the middle of nowhere it's, uh, and, and fighting the elements. That is something that you have to be probably special for it. It's the same as uh, guys and girls who climb the Everest. Why the hell do you want to climb up there, I would say. But they probably say the same, uh, same about us. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's in you or it's not, and I've got it in me. You know, there's times when you're surfing down the waves and you're just like, I just, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Like waves that are 10 meters high and just, it is stunning. Mm. Um, but it's also terrifying at the same time. And I think that anyone who doesn't have a little bit of fear in them in the Southern Ocean probably has a few screws loose. And you are so remote. Like if something goes wrong, no one's coming to help you. It is all on you. When you are lucky, like me, that you get in sport for so long, you, st you start to learn more that at the beginning, you are there probably for winning. But, but it, along my career, I realized that I am here for sailing. And, 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 and that's it. I, I just enjoy sailing and I enjoy the challenges the sport gave me that nothing else in my life gave me, gave me that feelings of challenges and that you get you sad, that you get you happy, that all the emotions of the challenges of an Olympic campaign or a sport event. Uh, I am, I continue racing because of those challenges and those emotions. Honestly, obviously I love to win, obviously, and, and I work like hell to win. <laughs> I cannot tell anything differently, but, but, but I am there for that. I am there for the feelings and, and, and I have it very clearly. I, I really continue because I just love our sport. It's a, such a magnificent sport. As a young athlete, you are willing to put everything on the line to achieve your goals. And that's really the epitome, I guess, of commitment. Uh, but it's a, it's a vision that I think in some ways has been oversold. Um, the notion that winning at all costs is something that we should aspire to as young or old athletes um, in sport, in business, in anything. And, and I think that's wrong. Um, winning at all costs does have a cost. Um, it has many costs. It has social costs, family costs, uh, economic and environmental costs. And we really need to reframe what we're doing within sport as individual athletes, as an athlete that does or does not make it to the top podium. It, it's more about the journey and it's more about, you know, it's not going to be satisfying to win a gold medal if, you know, if, if it um, has significant environmental and economic and family impacts, um, uh, social impacts um, uh, at the end of the day. You know, some bloody smart sailors and designers out there um, and all of their focus has been on performance, beating the rule, improving the rule, um, you know, having the most performance in the boat in the water. What we need to do now is to divert even just a small percentage of that gray matter to finding sustainable solutions. Uh, and so, you know, when someone says to me, oh, I don't know if we can really manage to have no single use plastic bottles on this event. I'm like, what are you talking about? We're, <laughs> we're, uh, we're foiling boats around the world. You're, you know, we're, we're, we can sail around the world now in less than two months. And so those type of arguments really are out the window now. And, you know, you don't hear them anymore. When you look at what we do from an aeronautical point of view, aerospace point of view, we're completely mad. You know, you go to any aeronautical guy and you say, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do this thing that's going to go around the world, you know, with all these load cases, which are pretty high load cases, with some people on board, uh, and this is going to be like a fuselage in steroids. And by the way, we don't have time to do much testing at all. We're just going to build this thing, and the first thing that comes out to the yard, we're just going to launch it. And a few months later, when these guys go around the world, they, they think you're mad. You know, if you go with a problem to any aerospace or nautical environment, they would want three or four times the budget and probably twice the time to accomplish the same thing. But yet we are, we are what we are and we are who we are. And, and we find ourselves doing these extraordinary things in record times and, and which only makes sense because of the passion that is behind it, the passion of everybody involved, you know, which is completely mad.
another really big part is what I like about it is just the the, the team effort uh, and and sailing in a team under yeah, sometimes very difficult conditions and get the best out of each individual. Pete, obviously you and Blair, um, friends, partners, but also two human beings, and you you like everybody I know put out this this image of you know we're strong where we're strong we're invincible where we're invincible and you know you've got the results to back it up but surely you also have flaws like anybody else so a couple of quick questions then i mean when was the last time that you guys had a you know like when was the last time either of you lost your temper with each other on the boat when was the last time you had an argument on the boat pete <laughs> well, i think it's a hard one to really describe but the um it would be the touch rugby field would be the last time. Yeah, <laughs> we're both pretty competitive to be. But it's something that, you know, a lot of people, um, you've got to be able to challenge the other one. And, yeah, actually, that's a big part of learning, you know, and you can't be, um, you know, I think a lot of people are a lot very passive in that regard. You know, you've got to be able to you know, have a good discussion and, you know, get to the bottom of something actually improve. Um, so it's something that, yeah, but I don't think we ever really have big arguments on the boat, but we're not afraid of, you know, saying when something's happened or when we don't think something's working or you know, having a good discussion about something and actually trying to get to a good um, good outcome, if that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, probably not blessed. You know, we're definitely uh, pretty competitive when it comes to other things. And, you know, touch fields, uh, yeah, we get some good battles on that occasionally. I really enjoy the, the team dynamics, you know, being... Um Actually, just being a, a small piece of, of, of a huge puzzle um, that together uh, you have to find all the, the pieces and, and make it work. And uh, it's a huge challenge. Um, I think teamwork is probably one of the hardest aspects of ocean racing, of sailing. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And it makes the reward at the end when you can celebrate with your teammates, uh, makes it only bigger. This win, winning the Volvo Ocean Race with the Dongfeng Race Team is, is better than the Olympic medal. And for me, the teamwork thing is, is, uh, is really the reward at the end to have done this with this group of people. It, it was truly an amazing group of people. And this team was really something special and uh, I'm very proud of what we did with Bruno Dubois and all the guys. And I really like the, the human side of this these teams for me of course it's special because i was a skipper but i i think for everybody involved in team it was uh, really something special that they will keep for their life because uh, because of what happened but also because of the energy of the spirit of this team and uh, that what is fantastic is usually um, when you do a volvo ocean race you don't want to speak to the other guy for a few months we still have the same uh, whatsapp group which we call dongfeng race team social and this group is still active. Nobody left it. I think for all these guys, it was a special moment, a special race. And of course, because we won, it was something incredible. So that will stay in our life for a long time. And for our kids, for our family also, 